Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I'm on vacation. So I decided to pre-record a mixed media session for my wonderful friends and fans that I just love so much while I am on a quick little vacation for some good and well-needed R&R. So here's what I'm going to do today. I've got my gel plates out. I've got my 12 by 12 and my 8 by 10 over here. We're going to do some gel printing and then I will skip forward and we will make a little project out of one of the gel prints. So you kind of get a two for one. You get uh, some ideas and tips on gel printing and then we will uh, make something with it. Do know that you can click on the gear that's just below if you're on a PC or up here in the corner on an iPad and change the speed change it to two times the speed and you'll get through the video faster. If you are enjoying a project that anyone shares on social media, whether it be on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest even, share it, save it to your favorite so that other people can see it as well. All right, so we've got a 12 by 12 gel plate. I've got a brayer over on the side over here. I've got a cake pan filled with just regular tap water. And I put just a little bit of Thieves cleaner in it. I find that it makes some of the paint loosen up a little bit better. But at the same time, I don't worry if paint sticks to the stencil. I just try to get the bulk of it off of there. I've got a few colors and types of acrylic paint. One is uh, just an all-purpose craft paint. This one's from Anita and the other is Master's Touch. I call this an artist grade paint. It's a little bit thicker. It's usually a little bit more opaque and it also takes a little bit longer to dry sometimes. So we've got a couple of these colors. I've also got some stencils from the All About Robins kit. This is a subscription box and in this particular one you get two stencil sheets that have between them three stencil designs. So we're going to use that. I've also got a few other stencils as well and I'll try to shout those out as we're using them. So what I thought I would do today is kind of use these stencils to make some cool patterns on my gel plate that hopefully will kind of match the all about robins. So I picked this as kind of an inspiration. We've got some teals, a little bit of yellow. Of course, there's some green, red, pink, and I think I said yellow on here already. So I just thought I would just pick a couple of those colors and then we'll do some patterns all over. So I'm going to start with this stencil over here that's kind of like connected wonky boxes. I don't know what to call it yet, but it's just interlocking boxes that aren't square. And so I thought I would work with that first. And I think what I want to do is I've got a little bit of a green here and I want to see what it would look like with a little bit of green. And then I'm going to move the stencil and place it over here on my gel plate to the right, which is an 8x10, mainly because I'm just trying to clean off my brayer a little bit and I want to use two patterns. <laughs> All right, so we put a little bit of green there, and I think I'm going to kind of overlap from the first stencil. You don't want to do it too quickly because this may still be wet, but it should be okay enough. And I'm cleaning off my brayer even more on a scrap piece of paper. So since we've got green, let's just kind of morph it into a yellow. So I'm going to add a little bit of a yellow here, and I'm going to brayer this on. You don't want too much paint, but you got to get enough to cover and I don't mind if it kind of is light in places and darker in other. It just gives it that cool effect of a hand printed page. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my water so that will soak off some of that paint because I don't need that stencil again right now. I am gonna grab a couple other stencils though. I believe this is from either July or August. I'll have it in the description box. I'll list which ones these are from. I have a stencil club that I offer in my shop and you can pick past month's subscriptions if you want. You just tell me in the description box of your checkout that, hey Linda, I want, and then just tell me I want the March from 2019 or August from 2019. You'll see all the images in the bottom of that post. 
so you can our product so you can see uh, what ones you might want and that one I've got a lot more ink or paint that I needed but that's okay we're gonna go over here I'm just gonna apply a little bit and clean off my stencil this is the flower tile stencil so I'm gonna put that over here and I did the green the yellow and the blue so now I'm gonna grab a pink and go over here with all right so I've got the pink added on both and now I want to put something here so I'm looking around oh I like this stencil this is another one of my stencil clubs and I just love it I called it fluffy puff fluffy plus signs <laughs> all right so we've got pink here so let's kind of morph it into a red Okay, so with gel printing, if you didn't know, when you layer all these pieces down, you have to allow the paint to dry just a little bit. You'll know because it'll start to look a little bit, depending on the paint brand, the craft paint will look a little dull. Now, the paint that is the artist grade may take a little bit longer to dry, but you can kind of tell that it starts to not have such a sheen on top of it, but you definitely need all of those to dry because if you go to put another color on top which helps you lift everything it will smear all of these so I'm gonna let this dry for a moment and then I'll be right back I've let it dry for a little bit so I think it's ready for me to lift these prints so again with gel printing what you do is whatever you want to see on top is what you put first and then you put colors behind and I thought I would show this technique because most of the time I usually just use one stencil and lay down color and then lift it up. So this is a little bit different patterning of putting it together. So hopefully it'll give you another idea of how to use it. So this time I've got an acrylic paint. This is the artist grade and it's flesh, kind of a peachy color. There's a little bit of that peach color in the kit and I wanted to be able to have some of this color whenever I uh, print it. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on both plates. I'm gonna start with the smaller plate first and lift it and then we'll do this plate. You want a smooth, even coat of acrylic paint. You don't want it super thick. So it takes some practice to get used to how much paint to put on your gel plate. If you put too much, it's a mushy, wet mess. If you don't put enough, your print won't come up. So I'm just putting a little bit on there. I'm gonna go ahead and clean off my brayer just so it doesn't gum up on me. And we're gonna just use regular copy paper. You can use any paper you like. I just use whatever is nearby. Sometimes I use book pages. Sometimes I use copy paper. You can even use junk mail uh, when you're printing. So use whatever is handy to you. The copy paper that I'm using, just cheap, super cheap, whatever I can find on sale when I go to the office supply store. What I'm doing now is I'm rubbing the whole page to make sure that it is adhered to the gel press. And so what it's doing is you've got to kiss that really uh, close so that it will lift all of that paint. Don't get in a hurry. All right, so when I go to lift it, I just pick a corner or edge and then just start lifting it up gently, smoothly, and then you will see your amazing print revealed. What do you think? It's kind of bold. It's a little bit out there, a little bit. It's not as muted as the kit, but I like the pattern in there. I think it's kind of cool the way that came together. All right, I'm going to set this one aside and then let's do this one. So this plate, since it's a 12 by 12, you can use 12 by 12 like scrapbook paper if you want, but I don't have that handy at the moment. So I'm just going to grab some of the eight and a half by 11 copy paper. And I'm looking at this because there's a pattern here, there's a pattern here, there's a different pattern here, and then there's two patterns here. And I think I want to kind of split this so I get a little bit of everything. And that ensures that my whole 8.5 by 11 is pressed or gel printed. And then I've got some book pages here. And all I'm going to do is just basically line these all up. So I'm going to start over here and press that down and I'll use those to make some cool things. In fact, I may do that today, show you what I do with these kinds of prints. So 
let's go maybe like this. So again, I'm just rubbing all of those pages to make sure that they're lifting up that paint. So I got a little bit there, a little bit there. It's so bold, it looks really cool. There's that green. There's the little bit of the green, the yellow going into the teal. All right, let's see how the big page turned out. All right, so it didn't lift all the paint here. It could be that I didn't have a thick enough coat so that it would get everything, but I still like the way it turned out. It kind of has a neat effect in there. It's distressed looking. Kind of cool, huh? Well, I have a whole basket full of gel prints, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up, and then I'll come right back, and we'll make something with some of these gel prints. I have several tutorials that show you how to make journal pages. I've got a couple of tutorials showing you how to make little pockets and stuff. This was one that I made during a live stream. So you can piece them together. You can use the whole sheet. I thought I would do today is show you how to turn what is potentially just kind of a mop-up page of a gel print. But when you look at it, it's really not that pretty. It's not that interesting. But we're going to alter this and then we'll make some tags out of it. So first thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit more color to this background here. So I've got some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist and I'm going to place it inside of a little box when I go to spray so that my spray doesn't go all over my desk. I've got the lace stencil. This is a standalone stencil that I have in my shop. Again, all of these stencils, I make those. I either hand draw them or I use graphics that I pull in and I then turn it into a cut file and we cut it on my laser that my husband purchased for me last year. So I've got the Peacock Turquoise. This is part of the Christmas Peacock Tattered Angels set. And it's kind of a tealy turquoise color. And I'm just going to go in here and lightly mist all over. And usually what I'll do is I'll grab a piece of paper and just mop up whatever Tattered Angels is on top. And then I can use this as a journal page or I can use it to collage with or something like that. All right, so we just got a very subtle pattern in the background there. It just kind of fills in just a little bit. Next, what I'm going to do is I've got the all about robin stencil and i'm going to lay that on here i'm just kind of looking i think maybe like that because i like the way the arrows are coming down here i've got some of the arrows there and here's what i'm going to do i'm going to grab a few colors of acrylic paint and put it in my palette here I don't need a whole lot of paint, so I'm just putting little dots. Then I've got one of these blending tools with the regular distressing ink pad on there. And I found that I can leave it on there for a really long time, so it starts to fall apart months. Months, months, and months I've left this on there. And what I'll do is when I'm done, I'll put it in water and wash it out, and I can use it again. So all I'm going to do is use this as a painting tool and grab a little bit of this purple. I'm going to grab a little bit of the teal at the same time. So that when I go to stencil, I kind of get a tri or dual color here. So just a little bit of the two colors and then just kind of pounce it up and down. So we can kind of see how that looks. So it's giving a little bit of a pattern. And I'm going to do that again over here. And maybe let's do it right here. All right, so I'm going to clean out my dauber and pick a different color scheme. I just keep a towel handy to the side and I just daub it off onto that after I rinse it out. All right, so now I'm going to pick up a little bit of this green and a little bit of pink. So I've got those two colors together. And let's go right over here. I don't have to go real heavy handed. I just want a little bit. I'm going to clean out my brush again and let's pick some different colors. I think this time I'm going to go with the teal and a little bit of this green. And I'm going to do this little arrow strip down here. Okay, and then let's do right here. And I think I want to do a little bit up here as well. So I'm just going to grab a little bit more and then do this one. We've got these three little arrows there. Maybe we'll do those in that pink all by itself. So it'll be a nice bold pink. I appreciate y'all watching. I hope you enjoy this little tutorial here. I'll be back next Thursday live at 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, and we will do some more printing 
if you have any questions about what I'm doing, feel free to ask. And of course, next week when I come back, definitely come to the live and ask your questions there as well. All right, I think I've got plenty of paint on here. I've really changed up the way this looks. I'm going to take my stencil and just put it in some water like I did with the gel printing stencils. And then I'm going to clean off my dauber again. And then I'm going to give this a moment to dry. All right, we've got a lot going on here, but I think it needs more. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to do. I've got the Romantic Swirl stamp. Mine is mounted on a wood block. Yours, if you purchase one, will be an unmounted or cling mount that you can put on acrylic block. And I'm going to use some Distress Oxide Picked Raspberry with the Romantic Swirl stamp. And we're going to add some texture here and there. All right, I'm going to set this aside. I'll clean my stamp. It's a good idea to clean your stamps every time you use the Distress Oxides. Let's pick a different color. I think I want to use the Dusty Concord with the Diamond Bar stamp. I think I like that. Just again, it may look really messy, but right now I just want a little pattern on there. I'm going to dry this and I'll be right back. I've got some Ranger ink in Jet Black Archival Ink, and I've got the script stamp, so it's the whole alphabet written out. And I think what I want to do is just stamp all over. And I'm okay that it didn't get a perfect impression. The idea is I just want to add some unusual texture. I think I'm liking that. I think what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and adhere this to a piece of paper and then let's cut it up into tags. I'm just using a Lean's Tacky Glue. I'm going to go all over the back side of this piece. I do plan to cut it up into tag shapes, so I want to make sure that I've got a good amount of glue. All right, so I've got my bone folder, and now what I'm going to do is just gently start pressing from the inside out to the edges. And what that'll do is bring that glue all the way to the edge so that the whole thing is adhered down. I adhered it to a piece of cardstock that I had in my stash. So now what I'm going to do is cut this up. This measures about nine and a half inches. So if I make the tags maybe like, what, three and a quarter inches are about. So let's do that. So I got two at three and a quarter, and I've got one that's right really close to three inches. See, it looks different when it's cut up into a smaller piece, doesn't it? Let's go ahead and cut these into a tag shape. Since these are the same size, I'm just going to go ahead and stack them one on top of the other and cut off the corner. And I'm going to take this piece and lay it on this side and cut off the same amount and then we get an even tag. I'll use the same little technique over here on this other tag that's a little bit smaller. Sometimes you know tags are kind of thin and if you're going to put fibers through it they'll rip. So I'm going to make a hole reinforcement. I'm going to use a piece of this that was left over. I've got, I think it's a three-fourths of an inch punch. So I'm just going to punch one, two, three times. And I'm going to go ahead and ink around those edges, and then we'll adhere them down. So I'm going to adhere these at the top, just down just a little bit on each one. So while that glue is drying, because I want it dry before I do the next step with this hole, I'm going to go ahead and go around the edges with Distress Ink. Walnut stain. I've got my Crocodile hole punch, and I'm going to punch a hole as best in the center as I can get of each one of these hole reinforcements. I like that. All right, let me look around and see what kind of stamp I want to put on top of this in a sentiment or two. All right, so I've got a Fleur de Lis stamp by Beeline Design, and I've got the Blueprint Sketch. And let's see how this is going to look. 
I think that looks kind of neat in the background there. I'm going to do that on the other two as well. I've got a few of my inspirational words. They're white words on black is what I call them. And I'm going to use some black dis soot distress ink to go right around the edges. I think I've got an idea where I want to put those. I'm going to just adhere those down. I've got some yarns or fibers here. I think these are from, I think part of these are from the Positive Vibes kit. So if you've got the Positive Vibes kit, you could use these pieces of yarn. So I'm going to cut, I don't know, 10 inches maybe for each one. I just kind of eyeball it. I've got a scrap or a leftover piece of some wax linen thread and this is how I poke through all my fibers. I'll feed this through. I'll feed the fibers through the thread which is a lot easier to do than that hole. I'll get it to the halfway mark. And then I'm going to pull this through, open up those fibers in the middle, and then pull these fibers through. And then I'll just gently pull until I've gotten them where I want them and the snugness that I like. Okay? And I'm going to repeat that on these two. All right. Well, there are the tags that I made using the mop up if you will of the gel plate using some rubber stamps additional stencils some fibers and of course the little words on top well, i hope you enjoyed this tutorial while i was on vacation that you're inspired to create that you'll come back on monday at 3 45 p.m central standard time where i'll be working on journals using all the digital images that i have and some of the gel plate uh, prints as well as rubber stamps and stencils and whatnot and then again i'll be back on thursday to show y'all some more mixed media bits and bobs that you can use in your journal do check out the description box below to links to my facebook group by linda israel as well as the friendly giant journal people facebook group and if you aren't already following along on the january creative prompts do check that out as well even if it's you know the what is this? The 24th, I think, of January, 24th, 23rd, maybe. And it's okay. Go back and do them because, in my opinion, the prompts are set up to kind of get you creatively going and you don't necessarily have to do them on the day. You can go back and think about those days and add them into your journal. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And have a fabulous day. Bye.